we have our our Frank looking snowman back. <laughs> and we're live. At Snowy the Snowman. <laughs> Snowy makes no face. Yeah. <laughs> As his full name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, zombie demonoids internet, what is going on? We're getting ready for another weekly, daily, Wednesday. How's everybody doing? Boom. Oh, Art the Theron is a certified mohill? Did you mean a mohill? Or did you mean mohill? <laughs> mohill. <laughs> Make or, mountains or mole. out of molehills. Yeah, M O L E. No. <laughs> <laughs> Moal. I'm teasing you, Art Theron. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about. Um, kind of a last minute thing. Threw in Pedro, just threw in the show notes to wind me up. I was like, man, I was having a good day. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> Be fair, Mira posted it in uh, Discord, and I'm like, okay, that seems relevant. <laughs> I yeah. didn't even read into it too much. <laughs> I'm even going to show you a hack to make the Twitter desktop experience usable. It's uh, that's something everybody should have. Installed. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. On the rare occasions that you're not able to use TweetDeck, maybe you need to post something or whatever. That's the business. Mm-hmm. I mentioned it last week, but I wanted to use it for a week before I recommended it to anybody, because I'm good like that. And Joe's going to tell you all about Amazon's favorite Linux distribution. Ah. It's actually a pretty big change. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> pretty big. And Pedro is going to talk about Vulcan. I am. <laughs> I didn't have a Radeon thing to see the um, the actual results of it, but uh, I mean, it works on Intel. Mm. I does at least it doesn't crash. I'm not entirely sure if it's using Vulkan, <laughs> but it's installed mm. and it claims it's doing the things. So. <laughs> Hello, FX boy. Let me get the. Uh... Social medias, retweets. There we go. Done. Zalmi. Cyberdog runs in Ubuntu. Oh man, maybe it'll get an update and fall over. <laughs> <laughs> Xiaomi is one of those um, companies that they make everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I wanted sure of theirs do. was their <laughs> uh, the. Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 or the 3S. One of those two phones was really nice at the time that it came out. Uh, and I kind of wanted one, but it was always very expensive, so I never bought one. I also wanted one of their uh, electric scooters because they had one that was like 300 pounds <laughs> for the longest time, and now they're like 500, so nope. <laughs> Don't worry, Pedro. Soon they'll be 399. <laughs> Hi, FX boy. How are you doing? And Cuban Cuba all stars. stars? Hello. Welcome. <laughs> A Mo two eight two eight with Linux. Yeah. Wait, th that's what led you here? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around. There's gonna be more of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can True have that. An episode of Week Literally Wednesdays without talking about Mark of the Unicorn, which we will be talking about because there's a new driver for a new thing, and it needs testing. Mm -hmm. I gotta write tack an email about the also drivers for things like. Now that we get rusty bits in the kernel, some of that stuff needs to go ahead and just get merged because the build process is getting from an outside point of view, and we're talking about me from an outside point of view, I'm like, this is getting unmanageable, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this, I'm sure it's mm -hmm. one of those things that makes perfect sense. And if you've created the workflow to get it mm -hmm. set up, but even from somebody like, I'm, I'm, I don't have a problem following something and getting it. Like this, this is getting unhinged, man. Too many things depend on too many things you have to drag back. Mm. I remember getting yeah, this duet to not boy. do the doing good. Eek, 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 eek. 
every now and then it was like uh, okay that that needs fixing <laughs> only connected it to a windows desktop all right <laughs> <laughs> can't say i've done that <laughs> here's something here's something i learned speaking of windows man so I thought maybe, just maybe, I would be able to do um, a KVM with um, retro version of Windows, Windows 7. Speaking of Firewire mm -hmm. interfaces, because they still got this uh, M Audio 2626 that I want to flip that bit on. Like, you know what? I can set that up. I, I have the thread ripper. It's got the IMO UU thing, and, you know, so I can do the hardware pass through, allegedly. Man, I lost an afternoon to that, just trying to get the FireWire <laughs> card to, like, release from the kernel and set up a virtual device for it and trying to get um, the KVM to <laughs> hook it. I, mm. I see, it, the, uh, I don't care enough came in real quick, real strong. Oh, okay. F it, I'll just wait. <laughs> well, you'd think it would be easy enough to transform a PCIe slot into just a root complex and then it would just go, oh, I'm just a root complex. I'm not actually attached to anything. <laughs> and this was not just, tr I had to go and change things. I had to rebuild the um, INIT and go into the BIOS <laughs> because I have to have that stuff disabled for the uh, Blackmagic 4K quad uh... to work with Threadripper. I just gave up. I, was gave, I, I honestly, I went to eBay and for, there was a minute, a minute in my life where I'm like, I'm just going to buy like the little cheap Dell computer. <laughs> uh, probably have better luck with a Sony Vio because they had Firewire. Uh, no, baby, babe, sweetheart. Or I'm not. Yeah. It, you know what? That person's like, I got a problem. I'm like, that's great. Send me a picture with your screen name of this exact Sibia card. Right. <laughs> kind of like I okay, did you. No, if you're looking for specific <laughs> chipsets, no. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I, I don't want the TI chipset revision A. I want the TI re revision B of this exact chipset. That is the one you need to be using. Because yeah. if you don't, tell you to have fun. I mean, the that via card that I got at first worked well enough. <laughs> I'm just eliminating. Any weirdness, any glitches, and um, plus that card, you can buy it brand new today, PCIe, for like 30 bucks or 26 pounds or whatever it is. 35 pounds from France. But that's your <laughs> problem. Including shipping. You bought it. <laughs> I missed out. I missed out, everyone. I was, I was this close to getting a French audio interface. Oh. There you are, Steve Husband. What He's happened? been working so many hours, I didn't know if he would make it. <laughs> the, um, I didn't realize today was December, <laughs> which happens yeah. in these times. It is, yes. <laughs> so I, I saw it on eBay, and uh, you know, I had it on my watch list. I'm like, yeah, I'll pick that up, pick that up. If somebody's going to be buying something, they tend to do it at the first of the month, I've noticed. Because they got paid recently. Or something, yeah. <laughs> so they're not worried about it. <laughs> it was gone. It's like, oh, it, and it's just been sitting all month. It's perfectly fine. I'm like, yeah, I'll grab that. And it's gone. Now, now I'm in a I situation have... where I, the connectors for it, it's cheaper to buy the card with the connectors than it is to buy just a cheaper <laughs> card and the connectors. Yeah. <laughs> but I want my French sound card is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> Sony Vios. Uh, here's what I'll say about <laughs> Sony Vios. I've never heard anything positive about them. Uh, it depends. Uh, some of, the, some uh, of their because, laptops are, are very good. They were kind of what yeah. uh, Mac based some of their laptops on. The uh, it, it seems to be like eight uh, to eight hundred <laughs> when it comes to uh, the hate because. I had uh, one of my schoolmates uh, from like first grade up until 12th grade 
when she went to university, she bought a Sony Vaio from like 2004. Mm-hmm. Brand new. Uh, she finished university at the same time I did, uh, 2011. And it was still working. She was like, Joanna, it's like, I, I'm just going to give it to someone else, but sure. And it was still running. It was running really, really well. And it, she never had any problems with it. The hard drive was ticking loudly. Mm-hmm. So that was probably not going to last very long, but I put in a faster, bigger hard drive anyway, because this was 2011. SSDs were still expensive. So, uh, yeah, it it seems to be the ones that suck, suck very, very much, and the ones that are good yeah. are very, very good. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple one. of the retro desktops that in my collection, and uh, they're still great. They have really good power supplies in them, too. <laughs> Someone give me a Sony Vaio laptop. And it was around that time, because mm. I was going to say early 2000s, and uh, it was new. But screen died on them. Nice. Oh. Just poof. Just <laughs> poof. <laughs> and I started to like play around, and then I realized, like, uh, no. No, I mean, I had work laptops. I'm like, I don't care. It was given away to somebody, and I was like, this is not worth my time. It was slick looking. I'll give it that. And it was high spec. It was the only reason. Mm-hmm. That's the, uh, the that was always the big selling point because uh, you know Sony laptops, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, FireWire pass through with a KVM. It's not the in and out type thing that you play around with. And I don't have a DV. Can you put Windows Seven on like? A, here's what I want to know. Can you make a uh, Like just a bootable thumb drive with Windows on it. Hiron, uh, mm-hmm. Hiron's uh, recovery CD. It yeah. comes with Windows 10 PE. Nope, can't be Windows 10. It's gonna be Windows 7. <laughs> uh, might might be able to find an older version of Hiron's boot disk then. <laughs> yeah, I know I've had Windows 7 on a USB. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's, Hiron's it's... is the uh, keyword to look for. Uh, it's also used by. People who like to do less than various things. <laughs> See, Hiron's Boot CD. Yeah, that was a. That one is really good. Um, yeah, there's another one too. It's not Newton Boot. It's a different brand, but a different company. I haven't looked into that yeah. in a long time. Uh, I wish <laughs> I wish I knew about uh, Hirons. Uh, uh, when I had to flash the um, firmware onto the Mbox 2, because then oh, I wouldn't have bothered yeah. to install Windows uh, 10 32-bit. Oh, that's right. Because you it installed. has to be 32-bit. Well, this is going to be Windows 7 for two things. One, this is like <laughs> the optimal time for the particular drivers that I need for this device. Mm-hmm. Also, I have two Windows 7 keys on top of these computers. You don't need to activate it. It, it, The only thing that the activation doesn't let you do is change the background wallpaper. Windows 7? And you can still do that, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) In Windows 7, the the limitations are the same, basically. I don't know. (laughs) Listen, I I don't know about these things, but I got Windows 7 keys. Also, it's going to work (laughs) with Windows 7. What's your problem here? (laughs) Where's the argument? And you got to remember, kids, Windows, Windows is for pirates. Linux prevents piracy. This was from my Twitter <laughs> feed yesterday. I went ahead and cut it out so no one would be like, oh, you're hating and being... Like, nope, nope, nope. I just want everyone to read that. <laughs> also, NZXD oh, you can also AIO use, software. Yeah. yeah. You can Cam. also use Ventoy. Yeah. That was the last time <laughs> I, I set up Windows on a flash no. drive was with... Like the first version of Ventoy. I want to be perfectly <laughs> clear to everyone. I'm talk- I'm not talking about installing Windows from a flash drive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's WinP. That's Portable Edition. That that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Pre-installation environment. There you go. <laughs> You're wrong, Pedro. I would have never found it by searching for WinP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no, Hirons is, it, it's like a savior. Oh, do you need Windows to say, flash a BIOS file or force a BIOS file onto a laptop that has a corrupt BIOS and doesn't let you update it via the UEFI? Mm. Hirons. I don't know, <laughs> I'll look into it. I mean, it's gotta be a full blown, <laughs> Because, I mean, I got to put a full stack of Firewire stuff on Windows and all this other stuff. Plus, okay. like, AISO drivers and a couple of other things have to be there. I mean, it can't be crippleware limping Windows. Like, hey, it technically boots and you can kind of do a thing or two. I mean, it's got to be full on Windows. It will let you update UEFIs by running the EXE files. That so doesn't yeah, require full on Windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty comprehensive when it comes to the uh, kernel and hardware support. FX boy, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> React <to> us. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad someone brought that it up. Cool. <laughs> we love React. No, oh, it's uh, yeah, but we're, we're talking about uh, rewriting firmware. Here. This is not a <laughs> rewriting firmware over FireWire. <laughs> This is this has got nope written all over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the Mbox, uh, even after installing Windows 10, because it had to be 32-bit, couldn't be 64-bit, because otherwise uh, that particular version of .NET wouldn't install. Getting the thing, the update utility to start, loading the updated uh, firmware uh, file onto the thing, and then watching the progress bar get to the end and say it failed. Ow. Mm, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Unplug the thing, wait a little bit, plug it back in, start the utility again. Oh, it's already on the latest version. Ah. Okay. <laughs> plug it into Linux. Oh, it's working now. Okay. <laughs> now I want you to um, go to the video I did on that and ask why it doesn't work under Windows 10. doesn't <laughs> oh you want me to go and do that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people have powered through that entire video and like it doesn't work in windows <laughs> like, yeah that's why they're 40 bucks man. <laughs> i just wanted to update the firmware and it did <laughs> mm. i agree with you mirror windows is definitely not something you could use as daily driver I mean, if you're just a regular person using WinPE, why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I know that Hirons used to have Windows 7 um, boot CDs for a long, long time. They were already DVDs at the time, but it started out by being boot CDs and the name kind of stuck. <laughs> so like how does it work do you need to because I have like Windows 7 uh no you just download the ISO is that even legal yeah Microsoft distribute that okay uh, mm -hmm. directly on their website it's just that Hirons comes with a full desktop environment and the rest of the Windowsy stuff <laughs> I, I, I'm willing to try it out it, it is just a live image. You just boot it, wait for it to boot, and go, oh, that's Windows. Can okay. you install drivers <laughs> on it? Uh, you can install things. I don't know uh, up to which point they actually stick. See, that could be a problem, because <laughs> it's Windows. <laughs> <laughs> if it requires a reboot, yeah. that might be an issue. 100% it's going to require reboots, multiple ones. <laughs> I don't know if Hiron's Boot CD does persistence. I think it does. At least it has some whatever um, mm -hmm. flash drive you use, whatever space is left. It lets you use that as storage, so... Probably? Virtual machine <laughs> with a Firewire pass-through. Those don't exist. KVM with pass-through. Couldn't get it to work. It doesn't have persistence. Okay. <laughs> 
See, this is I know why, that there this is, is why it's important to ask all these random event. questions, and I'm sorry for boring everyone in the live stream, but I just saved myself a non insignificant yeah. amount of time. You did. <laughs> I think I will go take a, a break. How I'll dare you? You just got <laughs> up. I know, but I didn't do what I needed to do. We went live like 20 minutes that. ago. <laughs> yeah, but that was for different things. <laughs> I actually didn't use the restroom then. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> All right. So, again, it, it all boils down to, like with anything else that you do, your um, given F a meter starts coming up real high when it gets in like crazy time sinks. Because I, I look at projects, it happens when you get older. And um, that pendulum swings back and forth. So I'm at the point in my life now to where that window of like, I, I nope, don't care enough. Next. <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> when I was young, if there's something I really want, then there's something I really want to make work, mm -hmm. like a broken laptop that I got off eBay. Yeah, I will go the distance. <laughs> I'll let something bug me like that for a little bit, for a minute, and maybe I'll come back and revisit it after. You know, because you know your brain's going to work on the problem whether or not you let it. And um, you come back to me like, nope. You immediately hit that all of like, don't care enough. And for me, this is so low. <laughs> this is just a. Uh... <laughs> I had a moment like that. I think it was with a laptop that I don't even have anymore. It was a, a year ago or so. And it had an issue and I couldn't figure out how to fix it. And I was lying in bed. And, <laughs> and Nori's like, it'll still be there in the morning. And when she said that, it's like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> Came in here, changed a couple of settings in the UEFI. Hey! <laughs> Back to bed. <laughs> That's how that rolls. I mean, your brain will actively work on problems without your consent. I mean, it's something that you, you just gave up on a couple of months ago and just boom, I don't know. You're like, what? Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Then, you know, of course this happens at three o'clock in the morning. 100% accuracy. That is, that is the optimal time for your brain. <laughs> like, hey, man, I don't feel like going to bed. Let me see what I got for you. Oh, how about this? I'm like, <laughs> ah, you want to get up now, right? Uh, I, I was kind of looking forward to that uh, compact with the NVIDIA on being something like that. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, after a few Google searches, um, it, it became very clear those netbooks had an issue where the BIOS chip would corrupt itself mm. very easily. If you looked at it wrong, it would corrupt itself. So if you go look on eBay for HP or Compaq Mini 311, bunch of them. <laughs> mm. So I had to order one from the US because they didn't have any here, but it was 16 pounds, no shipping. Like, okay send took about a week and change right but got here good condition removed the old chip soldered that new one in oh look it boots <laughs> yeah see it's just, mm -mm. see if i wanted to do that i would buy the PCI version of the French audio interface. <laughs> That's a PCI version? <laughs> it can be internal? <laughs> yeah, like my... We're using an RME Hammerfall right now. Right, 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 right. Yep. <laughs> People don't think about that. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah, they figured that out like in 2003, <laughs> man. Um... That is uh, one of the very fascinating things about like professional high-end audio stuff, like ADA um, conversion. They kind of figured that out by like 2003, 2005. Pretty much been the same set of Cirrus Logic chips or a uh, couple other TIs that you're going to see in there. 
still to this day. What what auto interfaces now? They have higher end ones have internal mixers, effects, and stuff like that, and they have more blinky lights. Gotta have the LEDs, man. <laughs> well, then you get things like how do you sell a uh, 500? You put a beep button on it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not lying to anyone here. This is this is where we're at with innovations. <laughs> I <laughs> oh, speaking of buttons that don't do much, that's the one thing that I still haven't managed to make work on that HP AIO is there's a home button on the front of it uh -huh. that I cannot make it work. What happens I like when you manually short it? Nothing. Nothing. Traced it back? <laughs> Does it have a like, cable? Uh, it doesn't have a cable. It's soldered directly to the motherboard, and it, the button is just a little membrane that goes click on the does thing. Does that have it. continuity with whatever's on the opposite end? Does that trace? Uh, I didn't check the traces. Okay, see, that's <laughs> step one, kids. <laughs> I, using, you know, uh, EV test and everything else, I hit the rest of the buttons after passing a bunch of ACPI flags. The volume buttons and the mute button down the side, those didn't work out of the box, but they work now. It's the home button. I click on the home button. It's like, you're not sending an event at all. So yeah, it is probably a hardware thing. Mm. <laughs> I, I, like uh, after I've like taken a little swab of alcohol to it and like, t -t 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 mm -hmm. and try to short it. I'm like, yep. All right. Continuity <laughs> test. There it is. All right. Then if you want to save yourself probably. a ton of time, uh, go ahead and get a solder <laughs> pencil. Or like broken traces where you just you, no soldering iron involved just go scribble on it a little bit you're done mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so i'm gonna grab something to drink and we'll go ahead and jump in and do this thing uh, okay okay mm -hmm. yay it feels mm -hmm. nice you know <laughs> oh yeah I so Pedro, Stretch you're so much more comfortable and not now. Hit Nicholas and you're... Cage in the face. <laughs> and not hurt your uh, legs. <laughs> yes. And I can cross my legs under the desk. In fact, they're crossed right now. <laughs> oh, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Which I, knew, I could like, not do because the moment I lifted my uh, <laughs> knees, like, tink, uh, mm, okay. <laughs> Although my foot can actually feel uh, feel the um, little cable thing, oh that yeah, IKEA sells for the under desk bits. Oh, like, <laughs> you can actually put your I leg can feel up that. there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how funny! <laughs> <laughs> the Sigmund rack, the the Sigmund cable rack. <laughs> it, it, it's that one that all of the YouTubers that do like the desk builds they put on the bottom. Yeah, it's like, it's okay, segment. everyone's using that, so <laughs> might as well. I know this by heart because <laughs> I've, I've helped people build them. <laughs> I'm watching all the uh, setup war shows from random Frank P and. <laughs> I will Tech levitate. Source. Well, I, I suppose one of my feet is technically touching the ground, yes. <laughs> but yeah, but that's um, awesome. Now you got the size of desk you need without having yes. to buy a pre-built one. That's not the right so size, like I had to do. Not the right size, <laughs> stupidly expensive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Less chance because IKEA has their own internal delivery people, so less chance of the uh, oh that's as fragile drop kick poo. Oh yeah, yeah, they're really good about that. We always get delivery from them because it's just easier than having to deal with finding a vehicle big enough for all the furniture. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's not cheap delivery, but uh, yes, they don't drop kick things, so yeah, I guess it's worth it. <laughs> what What was so nice is when we replaced our couch. And this is years ago. We have a, a nice uh, '60s modern orange couch. They They don't have that one anymore, but I love it. But the original couch we had, they not only 
you know, moved the new couch in, they moved the other one out and recycled it for us. <laughs> so I'm like, yay, go. Nice. <laughs> very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, effectively. <laughs> it's all made of cardboard anyway, so yeah, it is basically a flat pack. <laughs> yeah, our most or, of the uh, yeah. <laughs> with other couriers, you basically go. Um, so it says here that it's been delivered. I have half of the parcel with me. Where's the other yeah. half? Where's oh, the, other half? the address on it was wrong. We'll deliver it tomorrow. Three days later, where's the other half of the parcel? Uh, uh, go check with the seller. Go go check with the seller? It's like, oh yeah, DPD said that they broke it on accident. Oh, because they gave me to run around. Mm. <laughs> and then I got a very um, condescending cookie. It's like, yeah, here you go. 50p worth of sugar to make up for 135 pounds worth of desk that we broke. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, no, DPD has got a big, big mm. no <laughs> written on it. <laughs> what about medium nose? Medium nose? <laughs> uh, don't get a lot of those. You either get a nah or a no. <laughs> <laughs> don't really get the in between. See, a medium no is code for like, God, I'm doing something you know you shouldn't. But you do it anyway. <laughs> I qualify that as one of the small nose does. Eh, no, no, no. Like, we know better, but we're going to power through anyway. <laughs> Carmax Twitter has been um, becoming very popular recently. <laughs> Carmack was really shocked. Oh, yeah, he was like, oh, that. no. And like, it's, it's clearly right there. I'm like, dude, that's a secondary explosive. It's like black powder or something like that. Somebody kicked that new one full well what it was. It's not going to blow up. <laughs> ah, the other kicked me sicker. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that 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 was a package somewhere with like, hey, guys, watch this. <laughs> I'm very familiar with explosive stickers. <laughs> I too am a massive edge lord. <laughs> I got all over like my explosive tanks. <laughs> all right. So we got there, we got there. Three shots lined up. And uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, knock it into the middle of the park and confuse everyone in the outer field. Yes. Do that. Do that. I go there. There. All right. Let's go. <coughs> All right. We are recording, so something can go wrong in three. Hey everyone, welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I'm Vin, that's Joe, that's Pedro, and everyone watching us live on Twitch. <laughs> it's hilarious, isn't it? Every time I look at Twitch, I'm like, this is hilarious. What's going on? <laughs> Are you talking about the spam bots? Uh, people streaming without a whole lot of clothes on? <laughs> okay, okay. Hang oh on. Hang on. We, we got to roll this back a little bit deep. I, I have to appreciate some of the ingenuity in the spam bots because we've watched them evolve, even our small, yes. tiny little channel, because I do some <laughs> like rules for Nightbot to filter some of it out. And they're getting better. They're getting mm -hmm. smarter. What I'm trying to say is we, we're contributing to the evolution of spam bots. It's probably not a good idea. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Jill, uh, you are the one who celebrates Thanksgiving in yeah. the state sides. How'd that go for yeah. you, man? Did you just like end up in a food coma afternoon? Or? <laughs> no, I don't usually eat eat that enough uh, enough uh, to do that. Let alone turkey. I'm I I mostly tried to stick to ham and all the appetizers <laughs> instead of the turkey. All but right. I did have a little turkey. But I had two Thanksgivings. Uh, last Thursday, so you're one like with a my Hobbit style Thanksgiving, huh? Second Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, several meal, meals scattered throughout the day. But it had a wonderful time. It was so nice being with my brother and nephew and family. So that was awesome. And having the day off was nice because I worked the, the, west, the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just the tryptophan talking man uh yeah <laughs> pedro <laughs> you Hello. did arts and crafts <laughs> well ikea crafts because that's that's literally what happened here yes uh, if you were on discord yesterday probably saw i said i have a new desk and then uh, i did the stream Immediately after finishing putting mm. this up and turning it all on, as you see in that picture there, uh, it is um, that that was like three hours of moving everything out of the old desk setup, getting everything out of the way, cleaning because that Alex on the left had been in the same position for over a year, so that was a lot of crap. <laughs> hey man, but, uh, yeah, like, it what, is. What's up with the robe? You summed up a like cult leader or something? What's going on there? <laughs> oh. Um, you should watch Saturday night's podcast one of these days. I know listening is what all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend But you it. should watch. <laughs> Pedro, so. I like that you, you chose uh, black and white for your Alex drawers, just instead of just the sa the standard white that all Oh, he the, was uh, going on it for hours. He was like, it was the same. <laughs> I wanted, the, yeah. I wanted everything black. Yeah. I wanted the black tabletop and the <laughs> other Alex uh, to be also black. Had they nothing have to do anymore. with them being out of the colors. Oh, that that's what's going on. <laughs> it's like Ikea mm -hmm. doesn't have black uh, anything anymore. It's either a dark gray, blue, uh, a very light wood, or white. Mm. It's like, white okay, yeah. then. You know what? There's nothing um, gray wrong with for the tabletop and I mean, white for the other one. And then we'll intersperse like the this. drawers. How many there. times no. have you... <laughs> Perfect. Like step back from a situation that you had to put together with spare parts. Be like, you know, statically, it came out all right. Mm -hmm. Then we have yeah. Pedro's desk. It looks great. <laughs> Which, oh. uh, uh, it wasn't spare parts. <laughs> I literally ordered these because it's like, okay, I need this desk. Well, I don't need it. I want this desk configuration, mm -hmm. and I have it now. And it was only like 85 pounds, so all right. I'm okay. Right on. I got Perfect. out of it for less than a hundred pounds. I'm okay. <laughs> and Pedro is not violating one rule. He's violating one rule in stereo by having two PCs on his desk. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two PCs, three monitors, one of them, uh, all completely different monitors, every single one of them. This one's 2K, mm. this one's 4K, that one is 1080p in portrait mode. Yeah. Which this isn't the problem here. We have advanced sound filtering technology, but it's always my favorite thing I get, Pedro, when someone's like, why do I have all this fan noise? And like, uh, look to your left, look to your right. <laughs> yes. Do you see anything yeah, blinking, no, I, spinning? I need light. <laughs> so that's why that's on. <laughs> I was up to something. Um, I'm getting everything together for December's Interfacing Linux, which is... Uh, going to be kind of interesting because this is kind of like a redemption. It's, it's the full story arc of a device that caused me to create interfacing Linux. There's a nice little preview of it. I got some of the bits. I still got to do all the wordy bits and rearrange the entire order of the thing 11 times because that's how I roll apparently. Um, but <laughs> at the end, there will be a cohesive uh, story because it's going to be about the uh, DigiDesign 003 arm, which I just found, you know, perusing looking around uh this a couple of years ago now it's like early 2019 and i saw that it's like man that that thing's got crazy good specs and they're going for like 100 bucks so you know i did the cursory like hey does this work on linux and i found a site i was like hey the 002 003 drivers are available for linux they're awesome they work also drivers i'm like that's great i get it plug it in install the kernel modules and that 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 and it's just got like this ticking thing anytime i try to record and of course i went back to that site and i'm like and it's like oh yeah that's a known mm -hmm. issue i uh, 100 percent. that's a problem oh <laughs> to and that that's where it clicked i'm like this is this is not good you know there's an entire post outlining how it was reverse engineered and all the great work that went into it but it didn't include the by the way this is not usable as an audio mm. interface on our Linux. And that's when uh. like, we need to do something about this. And I'm just going to, if I could do it out of pocket, I'm going to do it out of pocket. So that's where that entire series of, I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit, 
not a hundred percent, but I can tell you whether or not something works correctly under Linux. So you have a chance of like, not, you know, just not buying something and going, oops, my guess it's not going to work. Plus you'll save yourself some money. So, uh, I'll probably, I, I don't like, I don't even know when, mm. maybe at the end of the week, I'll have that up for patrons so you can do your little snack pick and go over it with a fine tooth. Well, actually, and get back to me and I'll make some, <laughs> make any corrections, any glaring errors, spelling mistakes, all that fun stuff. And it'll probably be out probably second, third week of uh, this month because it's December, as I found out this morning. Yeah, you believe as that. I, I, we'll, we'll just have to pour one out for my French audio interface on that topic. I am still upset about it, man. I'm like, boo, I should have bought that yesterday because it was a decent price. Let's start off with traditional Linux news in haiku format. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Let's not do boo. poetry. <laughs> because everyone knows I'm not good at it. See, it doesn't work. <laughs> I can't get the syllable count right ever. So whenever I'm put on the spot to do a haiku, I can never do it. These people, on the other hand, they uh, put themselves on the spot to create a um, operating system based on uh, B. And wouldn't you know it, they've actually been doing a very, very good job of it uh, over the past few years. And this, well, this is Vulcan in haiku. Admittedly, it's going through Lava Pipe, LLVM, uh, and it's software rendering, so you're not, you still don't have any GPU acceleration, but it's Vulcan. It's working. It's progress. That's, that's. Blender's there's running. There's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> Open uh, uh, Zinc, Blender's man. running. Uh, there's a couple of bugs if you try to um, yeah, use Zinc. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you try oh, to. Of course, that's going to be in there naturally. <laughs> Never mind. Right. Atsune Miku. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, if you try to use Zinc, there's a couple of bugs. And uh, this was only really tested from the um, what I read on um, Radeon card. So your AMD uh, Radeon cards. I expect that if it works for the Radeon, it probably will work for Intel in the not too distant future or probably already does because I did load it on my X240 and I didn't try any of the fancy stuff. I didn't try Zinc. I just wanted to see, okay, I've installed it. Everything is still working. I'm not entirely sure if it's doing anything because it's all software rendered. Mm. But it's technically working. So, yeah. Nice. It's uh it's impressive. But uh, it, it is impressive the amount of stuff that they had to write from scratch because they ported a lot of it from Linux. Uh but a lot of stuff that just didn't work at all because they have a completely different base operating system. So they had to write a lot of stuff from scratch. So that's, that's impressive. That's very good. NVIDIA <laughs> released some proprietary mm. drivers for IQ. I dare you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it was really nice to see OpenGL over Zinc and uh, Rad V on Haiku has been tested with Blender. They said it does work a bit slow as expected, but I'm still, I'm sure that will improve um, as they develop it more and i just think it's so nice to see our favorite bos derivative getting vulcan love and 3d acceleration <laughs> this is actually really really cool something so unexpected <laughs> something i've always been curious about and um to this day is has there been any work done for the raspberry pi because well, when i think about haiku i think about you know the origins of the bos something that would work on what you would consider um, modern day CPU requirements, a potato, but it was capable mm. of doing, it was wicked fast, multitasking, had all the bits. And um, I just think that would be a perfect target for, you know, a, like lightweight 3D accelerated desktop experience on a little thing we call Raspberry Pi. It, it might even be overkill, but hmm, maybe, I don't know, maybe somebody's working on it or maybe it's like, well, you do it yourself. Okay. That's the thing. I think there's a lot of people looking at Haiku uh, because they've probably tried Linux. Like, ah, that's a little too easy. They went to um, BSD. It's like, those people are crazy. And then it was like, okay, so what are my options? Windows, Mac? No, no. Haiku. Just looking at and, some and of React the... And React OS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's... 
trying desperately to be Windows, though. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at some of the screenshots in the um, forum thread, all this is going to be in our show notes. I, I, I was definitely having some things way back when to, like, the weekend project of trying to get the Mesa uh, 3D example teapot working correctly through hardware. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I remember that. Now it's shit. just GLX gears. Yeah. Can you GLX gears? Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> I wish him the best of luck. Up next, we have something that Pedro just tossed in the show notes because he's like, hey, man, I bet. You can thank Mir for that one. <laughs> ben was having this nice day and everything was going swimmingly. And, uh, well, you know what? It triggered Ben. <laughs> we have some excellent work being done by the Fedora Project. And one of the things that they're going to be working on is workstation live streaming COMPA. <laughs> The wiki page is on the Fedora wiki. They they need better titles. They, they have a secondary title below the index, which is better, as in it's complete, but the top one is You're, bad. I, I, I'm against revisionist <laughs> history, Pedro. This is live streaming <laughs> compa. <laughs> and uh, what do we have? What do we have? Man, what don't we have? Okay. I got to be fair about this. You know, they start from the last decade. I, I can only speak to have been someone who has been streaming from Linux for the last decade, probably more than anybody else. But I say that without any ego whatsoever, man, because I, I'm looking at this. I got to assume this is kind of hastily thrown together. This is like a skeleton for some information to get tacked onto at some point. But they got a good idea. They intend to gather support from vendors and industry players to build momentum around this initiative. And what would you think is the initiative as where it sits to just, get more people broadcasting and streaming from Linux, maybe? I think that's yeah. the, the point. It's uh, very much streaming games, streaming coding sessions, uh, street, uh, streaming development in general, uh, that kind of stuff. So get all, uh, at least like a basic set of hardware and the software that you're going to need, which uh, for the, the the hardware bits, there were a couple of uh, strange choices, specifically, well, there was one strange choice. For the USB capture card, they recommend the Magewell 4K one. When you have the EVGA, not this specific one, this one is a little too expensive, but the one that Van has that is like half the price of this does the same thing, UVC compliant. Um, the EVGA XR1 Lite. Probably a better choice, or the Asus uh, ROG one, which actually advertises Linux support on its official page. Uh, the, what is, oh yes, uh, the um, the other thing that kind of jumped out at me, not a bad thing, a very interesting thing, the smartphone is a webcam, you know, everyone has tried to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yes, most phones have better cameras than um, your webcam does, obviously. So they say USB to HDMI adapters and extend KDE Connect integrated with lib camera and pipe wire so you can have everything. You just put your phone on the stand, KDE Connect with it over Wi-Fi and boom, camera. Yeah, nice. Please make that work. Please. That That sounds amazing. (laughs) That sounds to me like pressing activate on the um, NDI app. IP cam, yes. On Android. (laughs) That sounds yeah. like somebody wants to make use of pipe wire versus getting stuff done. I'm in the business of getting stuff done, kids. Uh, I don't pick favorites. <laughs> not at all. And the first thing I'm going to say from this list, you know what? Uh, I, I'm going to strongly suggest this is uh, adding all devices and software with official Linux support. The people who are currently, currently actively supporting Linux, be it on desktop, server, wherever. And I'm talking about Magewell. I'm talking about AJA. I'm talking about Blackmagic. I'm talking about NVIDIA talking about digigram i'm also talking about audio science some of those you're not going to hear you're like what moon speak professional stuff but it's there and you know you can get some of the stuff secondhand but all companies that provide official support for their av hardware should be listed there and like they have the mage well which is like the U- uvc mage well that's going to work on anything mm-hmm. it's a webcam um even rme in the audio side you got to give them an honorable mention because for 20 plus years, they have been providing the uh, special bits to the open source community so they can create drivers for their audio interfaces. I know that because I'm using some right now in my RME Hammerfall. Now, DaVinci Resolve, missing from the video editors. Very curious option there because that, I, I'm, you're not 
You're Those s- are all free, though, aren't they? Yeah, Where it's does not this open say, source. That's probably why they didn't this, include this it. Thing this thing doesn't fedora. say anything about open source or closed source. <laughs> At any point. It's Fedora. Don't care. It's Fedora. <laughs> I don't care. At all. Because, you know, where, where do you get, like, you start and end with that, man. Um, like, we're really going to be using open source solutions to do everything? Like, what about you want to just use open source hardware to do everything, too? <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, yes, a lot of people would. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm in the business of getting stuff done. Um, <laughs> that's why we have a Linux powered studio that does anything a TriCaster can do it that I built with spare parts from eBay. All right. Now, <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, DaVinci Resolve, that should be a thing because you, you got to focus on what people are using, man. You know? And that's the skill people are going to be able to take over. And you got Lightworks. That's also an option. And again, to the, using the smartphones, NDI's got that covered. As far as like PC to PC streaming, another thing, NDI. Uh, BitFocus Companion. Okay, you're going to be streaming. You're probably going to have this thing called a Stream Deck at some point. Not a Steam Deck, but a Stream Deck. <laughs> stream Deck. <laughs> probably going to have a Steam Deck too. Yeah. <laughs> Great little video. Uh, the thing that you, the open source Linux application that Linux is all the Linux is to control that properly under Linux is called BitFocus Companion. You probably want to throw that project in there. Um, I will take an issue at there. <laughs> talking about this in the pre show. Go back and listen if you're a patron. Uh, there's no such thing as a high end USB microphone. Just that, that, that silly speak. <laughs> I, I like that they have the one link and it's just the blue Yeti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where's the AT2020? You know, the de facto standard that everyone recommends. You want a USB microphone? That sounds okay. AT2020. Well, I mean, if you want a USB microphone that doesn't have like the absolute cheapest bare minimum uh, condenser parts in it, yes, AT2020. Yeah. <laughs> but Blue Yeti's got a better mm-hmm. marketing team because it showed up better on Google when they were searching for this. Um, yeah. <laughs> now... Envian code, I clicked the link because they were talking about, huh, what about hardware? Um, how did they put it exactly? I want to make sure I'm right about this. Hardware encoding. Hardware encoding. You got Intel VAPI. That's also going to be available with AMD, but the amount of bandwidth you have to feed that to get usable results makes it a non-thing. Ask anybody with Intel or AMD streaming with OBS. Um, Envian code. I went to Envian code and I clicked that and I found myself at a post from 2016. Talking about compiling uh, <laughs> FFmpeg <Ooh>. with <laughs> NV encode and setting up. Uh, I, was, I was having flashbacks because, you know, that that takes us back to 2016. In 2016, me and this guy uh, from Lutris, uh, <laughs> I put together and he scripted it, but I got all the bits together to actually build the FFmpeg with NV encode support. You know, hey, me and Lutris, mm-hmm. being buddy, buddy. What the moral of this story is, um, if you're using a distribution that doesn't ship or FFmpeg is not available with NV encode built in, go to a different distribution because it's 2021. We need to grow up. Like, it's Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> or you use AMD. Are they trying to imply <laughs> that this is only going to work on Fedora? Where are we coming at? No, I'm implying that they have questionable licensing when it comes to including certain things in their repos and not so much with the others. Mm-hmm. Back to reality, kids. Uh, here in the real world, you're going to need that with your proprietary NVIDIA drivers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you know, that thing that Fedora doesn't include. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> you got an RPM fusion for that. <laughs> one of the things, um, I will throw at the very end. Um, no, I wish them all the best. What I'm interested in is I want to see some, you know, the reach out to software developers, things like, you know, little trinky, you know, like the go XLR type stuff and interface drivers. And I, I'd like to see that support there. And I think Fedora project could absolutely you know, express some interest like they plan on doing and we can get some leeway on some end user software applications and drivers with, you know, better support than my, here's just the also stack plug it in. It works, but how do I control, how do I make it blink? You know, pretend you're Linus, the squeaky one. And you're going to be very upset. <laughs> you know, if your microphone, if your microphone has the ability to blink, but you have no way to make it blink. 
And um, oh, they actually mentioned that they mentioned oh, what, the what, Go really? XLR. I just joked around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't intentional. Uh, so yeah, I mean, th- this is a, it's a skeleton. It, it's a good initiative. Get started on it, and I look to see what develops. And I want to point this out as somebody who does a lot of streaming. Save yourself the heartache right now. Um, avoid Wayland. Avoid Pipewire. It's not there yet. I want you to know this. If you're going to be using it, especially with OBS. You'll be using Wayland with OBS. You don't even bother with NVIDIA right now on top of the Wayland with the pipe wires. You're not going to have a good time. However, if you would like to help with that development and report bugs, please do that. Again, I'm coming at it from, I need all this stuff to work and it does work currently. So that's like two different things. You know, I really wish I had the resources to build like thread boop or two to play with this stuff. You know, Pedro, you can play with it. Joe, you can play with it. This thing's got to cut on yeah. when I come in here and hit the button. You know, yeah. there's a reason I run Debian. It gets security updates and we're good. So best of luck to the project and good work from the Fedora project. It's Super. a start. I'll give them that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Either of you got any thoughts on that other than Pedro reminding me that the Fedora thing I'm reading from Fedora is in fact from Fedora? <laughs> it, it, it bears repeating because uh, the, their, their decision to include some things that have questionable licenses versus other things that have the same licenses beyond me, but I mean, okay. I mean, I've been running Fedora <laughs> yeah. since core one, but it, it's good to get brought up to speed. Fedora, Fedora <laughs> on the laptop too. It's like, I like the distro. It's just, here's some things. I have questions. That's, that's just how they roll. <laughs> I mean, it. there's like step one. I mean, <laughs> even with Debian, Debian, like step one is enabling non-free. Why? Because I need to use yeah. the system, Debian. <laughs> that's why. Add yourself to the sudo worst file. Disable the PC speaker. You have a PC yeah. speaker? <laughs> Laptops too. <laughs> Aren't we Built fancy? In. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Fedora on the topic of. Yeah. So speaking of Fedora, um, Amazon has just made a big announcement that Amazon Linux will rebase from Red Hat Enterprise Linux Rail to Red Hat's Fedora. Woohoo! And uh, it's now uh, Amazon Linux 2022 is now available via, via AWS control panel as AMIs. And what's cool is it will have two-year standard support with quarterly minor updates, followed by three years of maintenance support, which gets critical security updates as soon as they are available. Wonderful. And SE Linux will be enabled by default. And there is just, you'll have to read this article. There's a lot of good things going on with uh, Amazon Linux. And to me, this is actually a really great move because it will put Red Hat's bleeding edge Fedora on even more cloud infrastructure and thus even more updates and innovation and uh, may help us in the streaming department as well. <laughs> so. There's, there's a, a lot of happening around Fedora lately and you have yes. a behemoth like, you know, AWS we're going to go to Fedora. It's like, okay. Yeah, that's huge. The, things are becoming interesting. I'll give them that. Amazon, SC do me Linux a favor. Linux enabled by default and the server makes sense, but that's it. Somebody on the branding <laughs> yeah. and marketing team at Amazon, for the love of Flying Spaghetti Monster, name your distribution, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of AL, AL 2022. <laughs> I just want to be able to say, what do you... So what, what's your stack on? Oz, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're welcome. That's awesome. Then- you know, the other cool thing about this is that uh, Ubuntu, uh, you know, Canonical is teaming up with Microsoft, t- Microsoft to put Microsoft Server on a, a lot of uh, servers and use WSL for Linux instead of using Linux bare bones, which... Is a little weird. 
<laughs> so yeah, the article brought that up. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in the extend bit now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We got good news. Quick mention of this. Uh, we were talking about Wayland just a minute ago, and I, I think Wayland, yes. Wayland's in the future, and it's only nine years away now. Um, we blame a lot of people for that. Uh, <laughs> It works for the latest gnome, but what if oh. you what if you want to run a retro gnome desktop, Pedro? Uh, that's the thing. Even if you have like a slightly older version of gnome, like the one that's being shipped with Ubuntu or Fedora, since we're just talking about them, if you have an NVIDIA card, maybe you notice that things didn't work terribly well. Well, uh, they've backported um, the NVIDIA GBM stuff, literally what they called them, backport NVIDIA GBM stuff to GNOME 41. There you go. It, you should be able to actually get it to start. Uh, they said uh, it should be possible in about three commits, and uh, the issue is closed now five days ago. So I think if you're pulling um, the current updates or if your distro is tracking the most recent version of GNOME, even if it's the stable one, 41, maybe, maybe your NVIDIA card will be able to get GDF up and running with Wayland. I do, however, wonder uh, between, you know, GNOME and KDE, the two big ones, um, which one will have the best experience with Wayland? You know, Old GPUs, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, whatever VIA is doing nowadays, um, Matrox, uh, mm. all of them. Just, you just, whatever uh, GPU you happen to have, you load up GDM or SDDM for KDE, which one of them will give you a picture on screen with no issues regardless? Considering uh, KDE's sordid history with NVIDIA, I think Gnome's going to win that one. Why, why is that? <laughs> I, I genuinely do not keep track of slap fights between corporations and open source projects. Uh, as someone who's been using KDE with NVIDIA over the past many, many years, uh, every single time that I've complained that it has crashed or NVIDIA specific bug or uh, the bug that Arthur and posted in Discord a couple of days ago that the NVIDIA drivers keep spamming uh, the D-Bus uh, thing because uh, yeah. of a little incompatibility with KWIN X11. It's not even Waylon. We're still on X and the NVIDIA drivers and KDE do not like each other. They never have. Let me tell you about XSC. Yeah, they... um... <laughs> <laughs> I want a desktop environment. <laughs> <laughs> Again, don't listen to me. I, I'm just trying to get stuff done. <laughs> yeah. So I was really thinking that this should uh, um, absolutely speed up things quite considerably in GNOME 41's desktop with at least if you have an NVIDIA GPU, because there's sometimes a little hesitation when you're moving around the desktop. And this is a good thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially with NVIDIA GPUs and on Fedora. <laughs> 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 it's on gnome in general not necessarily yeah, just, just fedora but just gnome. everything yeah. gnome right now mm -hmm. yeah just in case we somebody's pulling up us uh, pulling up their fedora like oh you're hating it our co-host on saturdays just... is jordan it's like from the fedora formerly working with the Fedora project and all that fun stuff uh but yeah and i've been using fedora probably longer than you've been using linux keep that in mind now <laughs> Mikasa, Sukasa? Is that mm -hmm. how <laughs> Casa OS. So, Casa How do you say OS casa means... in Portuguese? Casa. Mm -hmm. How boring. Oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to the, the Mexican pronunciation of it. In fact, I, had a, I grew up in a house in Mexico. And we, it was called Casa La Quito, or House of the Crazy One. That was my father who rode a... Uh, 50 foot waves. <laughs> so anyways, this is a uh, Casa OS is a simple and easy to use open source home cloud system, which is based on the Docker cloud system. And this made me really happy. And because it uses Docker, Docker, it is easy to install uh, a network attached storage and home smart applications with just one click. 
And there are apps for storing your camera recordings, controlling your lights, creating a cloud drive, or even an entertainment center or a VPN. You know, wh whatever your heart desires. And I'm not going to let it slide. Awesome, There's a unicorn in you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. there, oh, yes, the refactor. Oh, I didn't notice the that before. Unicorn refactor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything's just regular. No, unicorn. All right. <laughs> yeah. As you want. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Cast OS is compatible with Ubuntu, Debian, Raspberry Pi OS, and CentOS with an easy one liner installation. And it's still in early development. And the Icewell team is looking for contributions from developers and from testers in the Linux community. And I'm really looking forward to trying this because I've been wanting my own to use an open source home assistant. And I've and even done that a little bit with the, the application home assistant. You know, it's the application uh, home assistant has been around since 2013. So it's nice to have another open source option in this field. <laughs> Whatever Definitely. happened to Mycroft? I'm sure it's still around you, monster. Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anything else about Minecraft for a long time. So I just Yeah, wonder. I'm not sure if <laughs> development on it. I, I I remember reading something about the development had kind of stopped on it, but but it may have uh, started again. But I haven't checked that project in a while. I had used yeah, it no, years I, ago. <laughs> I like the idea of stuff like this, like Casa OS. It's so it's an OS for your casa. Uh, the yeah. uh, part of that part of me likes very much, you know, the sci-fi thing of you walk into a place and you have a phone or a tablet, something in your pocket, you just grab it and you're at home. So you have access to all of your home stuff from one device. Same thing for everyone else in the family. And then you go outside and the OS on the phone becomes, okay, whatever came from the factory because it's mm -hmm. more secure. Let's pretend like that's a thing nowadays uh the <laughs> but yeah no that idea of like you walk into a place and it gives you like here's your operating system for this place you can do this you can do that you can turn off the lights you can turn on the tv you can play music you can play a movie you can do all that stuff i love that i do i like that <laughs> so uh it's so convenient <laughs> Minecraft also... is still alive and well last uh update Eight, day, eight days ago. So, oh, okay, good. 21 hours ago. Mm -hmm. 21 hours <laughs> I saw ago. It 21 hours ago. <laughs> so, yes, uh, unfortunately, my my, uh, my co host uh, might have given an early burial. It is still very much actively <laughs> I, developed. I did no such thing. I just wondered whatever yeah. happened hey, listen, to it. Listen, it was a tag yeah. team effort of random guessing. So, uh, <laughs> it was. It was. Cas OS, it, this thing originated its pre-installed system for a crowdfunded project called the Zima Board on Kickstarter, which I went and took a peek at. Mm -hmm. You know, with a new world we're living in, of course, it's been delayed, but it seems like they've got most of the stuff there. But I did see some comments, you know, it's like a single board. No, I a link in there. I might have a link because it looked like a slick piece of kit. I didn't see how much it cost. But uh, some people were saying, you know, by the time this thing ships, I'll be I'll move to a different house. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> you can take your computer with you. There you go. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's server, ice scraper, everything you ever look for in a personal NAS. Uh, that looks mm. like one of those clip-on attachments for, like, the hair trimmers. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say on a, a razor. It looks like a, a man's yeah. razor. <laughs> a metal razor. <laughs> More pictures of this thing. Uh, how much did it cost? I'm just now I'm just poking around. Uh, six hundred. How much is six hundred twenty for the early bird? So add another twenty percent. <laughs> what is six twenty HK in USD or um, sterling? Hmm. Uh, HK dollars. Let's see. Uh, six twenty in Hong Kong dollars. To riveting entertainment. <laughs> GBP. Aww. So our Theron actually said How much? In I couldn't chat, hear you. Joel was talking. 60 pounds. 60 pounds. That's not too bad. All right, Joel. Oh, well, I was just trying to keep the keep it moving <laughs> while Pedro was looking. But uh, our Theron said there's a similar project to Casa OS already called Home Lab OS. And I've forgotten about that one. Yes, that is another good one. <laughs> 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if there's one thing I enjoy, it's MIDI. That's a lie. Despise the thing. Um, but MIDI is a popular <laughs> way of dealing with like virtual instruments and all this other fun stuff. I use it. This desk is covered in MIDI. It's dripping MIDI. And MIDI's changed over the years. Uh, back in my day, we used to actually have to use the uh, DIN key holes and plug in and out and wire that. Mm-hmm. It was a, it was all kind of nonsense. And this fancy new technology, this where until you get off my lawn, came out called USB. And lo and behold, people figured out how to send MIDI signals over the universal serial bus. And here we are today. Um, <laughs> fortunately, this control surface, this is another thing you can do. You know, you can control lights and all the fun stuff. I use it to control faders, plugins, and all the stuff for the show that we're using right now. But this one acts as, this one, again, clever. It's also a USB hub. So I was able to plug this USB one into this one and then use one USB port. I was like, all right. Daisy chaining. <laughs> that, that's not, that would be like a hub. Yeah. You know, I've never looked into like a packet priority uh, distribution through a USB <laughs> hub, how that works. Like if there's any, is there any brains in that or is it just yeets? <laughs> there's got to be some sort yeah. of microcontroller because otherwise what happens if you get like all USB data lines congested, which one takes priority? So it, it has to have some brains. <laughs> Possibly. Now, I am trying to find some decent images and Google image search. The one time I needed to do something's not helping me out even a little bit. Quite sad about uh, The image I have in my head is like you have the... Uh, crossroads and then you have literal buses coming in from each side of the crossroads and which one goes first it's like okay (laughs) that's the image i have in my brain of usb uh, crowd control (laughs) well there's got to be a little chip in there for input and output packets you would think (laughs) (laughs) that's that's a bunch of wires connected together figure it out <laughs> It'll smash around till it gets bored. Find its way home. <laughs> the reason I bring this up is Vampire Frog has released a beta driver for Motu MIDI Express. The 128 USB version is here now. A couple of things you may need to throw out there. It's only available. Uh, well, it's only been tested in the 5x series kernels, and uh, you know the five port version may or may not work. But this is definitely 100% seeking testers and i i love a nice little reverse engineering project and motu is very much used to it that's the uh 128 do i have some better you can see on the back you got eight well seven in seven out mm-hmm. and that's going to come in handy i mean if you get a bunch of uh, uh keyboards and synths and all this other fun stuff plugged in you might not have 11 usb holes on your laptop especially mm-hmm. and uh you can plug this in plug all your devices in and it's going to work, allegedly. That's where it needs some testing. So maybe we'll try it out. And I, I love seeing more and more stuff from Mark of the Unicorn get reverse engineered because way back in the old times, you know, in the early 2000s, when they first came out, I don't have the original. Mark of the Unicorn was the first people, first company to release a Firewire audio interface. They completely like rewrote the game, changed the game, because before that it was a PCI card that you had to buy, like an Echo Layla or something like that, or an RME. And I was like, hey, we can use Firewire for audio. It's an awesome bus to do this, and USB wasn't the thing then. And, uh, of course, you know, the Linux-loving miscreants were like, hey, uh, we, we've seen that you've implemented a very non-standard way of this protocol. So could you give us the bits to, you know, we'll sign an NDA. Do we just need to be able to figure out how to make a driver for it? And Motu gave them a resounding get wrecked. We're Motu. (laughs) Now, as we all know, the fastest, absolute fastest way to get your driver stack reverse engineered is not to release Linux drivers. (laughs) So like the most thoroughly documented (laughs) and reverse engineered Drivers are for Motu. That's why I have so many Motu devices because they're just rock solid. I mean, that was uh, that was a principle, and it's glad I'm very glad to see that this is also available. Good times now. Jill, have you heard of Twitter? Oh yes, I really? use it every day <laughs> for 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 us and another Linux network <laughs> constantly. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Pedro? Uh, yeah, I I think I've been on there since 2012. Yeah. <laughs> Noobs. <laughs> I've actually been on longer than mine says because I had a different account before. <laughs> I could say that too. Uh... <laughs> Jill was doing naughty stuff on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. That, that's no. just like, oh man, I, I'm so embarrassed by that account. I had to wipe it from the internet. Now, now the entire Aww. internet's going to go find that account on Web Archive, and I look forward to all the emails next week with the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So well, I like being known as at Jill underscore Linux girl. So <laughs> I go a lot of places with that, but I'm just not. Um, so <laughs> let's talk about a way to tweak your Twitter because, you know, like Pedro, me and Pedro live that tweet tech life. That's the only way we're going yeah. to interface with Twitter because we got to search for a lot of things, keep apprised to the news. But every now and then, Every now and then something piece of my heart, but you got to use the desktop Twitter client. And this is what this plugin takes care of. It is kind of brilliant. I've been using this for about a week. I mentioned it during the live stream last week, but I didn't say anything, mm-hmm. but I want to play around with it. It's available for the Chromes, Firefoxes, the uh, let's pretend it's not Chrome and call it Edge, that one, Opera mm-hmm. and <laughs> everything else. Now, what does it do? does a gang of things like it completely nukes the who to follow nonsense the what's happening nonsense the more tweets and all the algor- algorithmic uh tweets based on likes and just all the crap that you all the don't spam. want to see <laughs> you yeah. know and how many times how many times has this happened to you because i i immediately i noticed this more on the debt not desktop but the mobile app is mobile i'll pull is up just bad. i'll pull up <laughs> the application and all the tweets will be wrong. I'm like, what is this nonsense? Because they keep on cutting back on the. Uh, mm-hmm. No, we're showing you the most relevant tweets. Yeah. No, I want the tweets sorted by when they came out. Mm-hmm. I want to see the new tweets yeah. as yeah. they come. But this is better. No, no, it's not. Better. I'm not interested in anything you're trying to sell me right here. And <laughs> my, this is your AI. Your AI eats glue. Uh, and let's cut that yeah. back off so yes. I can. <laughs> Oh, is that why uh, the CEO person is leaving? No. Okay. Here's, <laughs> yeah, a, here, here's like a little too. side thing. A lot, a lot of people are like, Jack Dorsey's like Jack Dorsey been a figurehead for Twitter for the better part of a decade. He's not running anything. <laughs> like, there's no victory lap to be had by anyone here. This is, is he going to make NFTs? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the CEO of Square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right. yeah, he's, I, I'm sure his decision to leave Twitter has been a lot of, like, it's been demonstrated multiple times of, like, what he's been, like, hey, I'd like to see this happen at Twitter. Not going to happen. He wasn't mm-hmm. steering the ship, kids. I, you know. So. <laughs> We'd like to invite you to come steer our ship. That's right. <laughs> you can do that by becoming a Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We want to thank each and every one of you who help make everything that we do on this apparent network. Jill keeps using network. I don't I don't understand. Yeah. We're on the Linux Gamecast it's network. <laughs> We've <networking>. grown. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, I, I don't know. Uh, I just look at like the legal <laughs> documentation. It doesn't say network on it. But hey, man, I want to believe. LLC. LLP. Yeah, LLP. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I had to fill all that nonsense out. Um, yeah, uh, we ask for four quarters a week. If you got it laying around, we add that together. We bring you shows. We do all of our own hosting on top of everything else. We're not like you know nobody's like stealing your data bits and privacy bits. We been no, it's quite expensive to hold ten years worth of content online, but we're able to do it with your support. Uh, if you like what we do, loud live independent. We don't run ads. I know Twitch has probably got ads or you do it with podcast is always going to be ad free, but we got some bonus sodas. We got some bonus sodas for those quarters. In fact, if you get more than a couple of quarters, we got some like bonus 50 pound. What is it for? 50 gallon drums of uh, happiness. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we got the pretty, pretty super Very shows. Slippery we invite happiness. you to come listen to it before the show even starts. If you like the live thing, we got it in podcast format. This is about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. This show from beginning to end and high quality production too. Cause I completely reworked everything. Cause I know people want that big chunk of audio. It's about two hours long, hour and a half. Q 
keep that in a custom RSS mm-hmm. feed for our patrons. And, um, you know, I was talking early in the show, like stuff I'm working on, stuff I'm doing here in the studio, uh, videos, instructions, and guys like that. You always get the first taste because you're financing that getting made. And listen, you might call it a fool's errand, but I think us together working like that, we can get actual information in the hands of people coming over to Linux as opposed to, you know, guesswork from the not that Linus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the squeaky one. Yeah. The squeaky. <laughs> I very much appreciate that uh, we got that nickname. Hey, man. <laughs> Linus. Not that one. The squeaky one. That's, uh, yeah. Aww. yes. Everyone immediately gets it. That's everyone knows yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a few people to thank, then. So we Woo-hoo. have uh, K.R. Decky, which is a new, he's a new patron, and he's been very active in chat. And yeah, that been, was fantastic. Been, I saw that, and I wanted yeah. to bring up, it's always fun. We have access if you subscribe to us <laughs> on uh, Twitch or if you're a patron, and we let you in our super secret, uh, totally underground, don't tell anyone, Discord thing didn't automatically sign you in. But it's <laughs> great to see somebody pop in for the first time and have the, my people moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys just like, talk about that stuff? Okay. It's like, this is where you've been hiding? And then it He's goes exciting. places. And of course, you know, me, me and Jill's husband are talking about early 60s, like, cars that happens. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, oh, right. Then we were trying, cool. there was an entire afternoon spent of trying to get Doom Eternal up and running on under Linux with an APU. APUs. <laughs> and th- this is the... Yeah. Where it gets interesting is uh, the creator of Lutris is working on this <laughs> in Discord. And we're going through and Pedro, I was like, Pedro, don't you have some? I was trying to get somebody to buy you a copy of the game, man. You're welcome, but nobody bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did not get a free copy out of uh, Doom Eternal on that one. I thought somebody was going to yeah, slide no. one over to get like, <laughs> It's always fun to see Strider hanging out in our Discord because yeah. he can just let loose and be himself and say whatever he wants. And everyone expects nothing it's less from most yeah. pictures of otters <laughs> and capybaras. So don't get your hopes up to us. But yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of a Frenchman, we have another one. I think that sent a game, the Sildat. He hasn't, I haven't heard from oh, him yes. in a while. It's good to see him. <laughs> the Sildat actually just popped up in my uh, steam today. It's like, you have been gifted a uh, pedal crash. Uh, awesome. Like flower petals, not uh, bicycle ones. <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, thank you. And he said that I was like, oh, I wonder if you if you guys like puzzles so much. Here you go. I was like, okay, all right. So thank you very much, uh, the Sildat. That was very Yay. much appreciated. We will most definitely uh, take you up on that offer. Yeah, at some point Aww, in the future. Very nice. Nice. It's all and, already uh, been mm-hmm. thing, but maybe next one. Jeez, you gonna put some more time on that one? Mm-hmm. No, oh, come on. I think you can have thirty <laughs> seconds. Just random noises, beeps and boops. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for supporting us. And as always, here live, we have a Twitch bot, and it's a little custom creation that links uh, for our live shows. That links our Discord IRC, which uh, IRC is available. Just head over to the live segment at Linux Gamecast. All the things. We're, we're, it's not free node anymore. It's uh. Libera chat. There we go. We made pound, that change. Uh, L, uh, pound Linux game cast on Libera chat. Yeah. yeah. That is a thing. <laughs> All right. Um, let's get into that button because it's got that on it. Oh, a teeny tiny. But Ven, you've shown this picture before. <laughs> He's recycling. Definitely. Yeah, that was definitely. <laughs> is, is that cherry pie? Mm. Yeah, that or looks cranberry. like definitely like cherry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, cherry cranberries, cranberries wouldn't, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and they're they're held together a little better than cranberries. Are. <laughs> oh. Ooh, th- throw in some shade at the cherries right now. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, the teeny tiny little bit of um slice of pie because everyone already knows about this, but we haven't talked about it yet. There was, and I say was because it is still actively supported, and they are making more. But it's gone now because people bought every single one of them. A mini ITX uh, compute module motherboard. 
Uh, it's just a little baseboard that, that right. you put a right. compute module Seriously, for. Awesome. It. That that looks like somebody did a miniature, like a home hobby kit, like uh, you know the hobby cars that you glue together of a Dell Optiplex. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody bought a video card. That's uh, a, an AS Rock A three hundred type of case. It's got a mini. Um, it usually comes with mini DTX motherboards in them. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, so- I was just trying to make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it is like uh, uh, the Velka. I can't remember the actual company name, but the model was the Velka. But yes, this uh, particular baseboard that just takes your uh, compute module 4, plug it in and you can plug in a GPU. You can plug in a ton of NVMe SSDs. You can plug in a bunch of other things. And of course, Jeff Geerling, uh, has, he's been uh, off to do recently, decided... Well, I'm going to get one of them and I'm going to plug in a GPU and I'm going to plug in a bunch of more <laughs> things and I'm going to show people what works and what doesn't work. After his video came out, every single unit that was available that they'd made for the initial run disappeared. So he said within a few minutes, now. too. <laughs> now the, reason, the reason this is kind of impressive, what you're throwing down there, is... Being out of stock, so mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, it's a Raspberry Pi thing that's born, you know, it's like 30, 40 oh, bucks, right? And no, not $435. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's not cheap. And it immediately disappeared. So, yeah, no, very good um, to the fine folks who created the um, the Seaberry, as it's called. Seaberry. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's. Very well done. I want one. Uh, I very much mm-hmm. like the idea of like the pie desktop machine you put a pie and then you just throw hardware at it and you see what works and what doesn't i want to play that game i do <laughs> uh, but yeah i can't buy them anymore and for that price i probably wouldn't need <laughs> no i <laughs> think just me with a compute module um maybe not even a raspberry pi brendan compute module uh but some of the rock chip based ones i could take that see it's it's gotta do something they, they gotta like ramp up production to bring that cost down considerably before yeah. something like this is considerable but to build a arm based uh daw digital audio workstation because that has a oh, pcie that's a hole use case by one yeah. and that's all you need for the audio something like low profile i, I but again perfect. 400 bucks but out of stock in stock doesn't matter that's that's outside of the uh like budget constraints of like that'd be neat to play around with yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what you need to do is make it three ninety nine, so I can help Pedro about buying one. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that would take a couple of months, but I could probably afford that one then. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could put, oh, yeah. It's not about like a four. It's to put a lot of stuff on hold. What are you gonna do? A video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I exactly feel the same way as you, Pedro. I really want one of <laughs> one of these to play with because I love my yeah. little mini ITX computers and having a you know, a very, a custom Raspberry Pi motherboard in one just, Mm -hmm. just makes my, uh, geek heart shiver. (laughs) I like it. It's it's like the Raspberry (laughs) Pi, that thing, you know, it's like, oh, it's uh, that thing you use in like the gaming handhelds or the (laughs) IY ones, or that thing you learn to program on if you're young enough to do that. The, but for everyone else, (laughs) it's like, oh, it's seeing that thing turn into like, a desktop system. No, Pedro. I, I'm going to buy one, and I'm going to I'm going to do a video showing people how to mine chia on it. <laughs> chia, chia pet. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Guess that's what you can do with the um, M.2. I'm the going NVA. to take I'm going to take advantage of that down arrow not having a number on it anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, you could just dislike everything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would like to tell us about your pie powered projects or anything else that have going on, we have a handy dandy easy to use contact form that will allow you to do just that. We do, and it's cleverly hidden. Maybe this you've never you heard of this website, it is. Linux Gamecast. You really would think it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Considering uh or, or that there's no text above it. Uh, but yes, if you go to linksgamecast.com, there's a contact button on the nav bar. You click on that. It goes and to a page of this as contact. Yes, uh, it, it's, it gives you the contact form. There's some caveats at the top, so you got to scroll down. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> not for tech support. Not for tech support. Not, 
Okay. <laughs> but yeah, read the caveats at the top, basically. And if you'd like to send some feedback for this particular show, pick LWDW on the drop down box and uh, we'll we'll feature your thing right here. Mm-hmm. Right. Also not for tech support. Um, <laughs> not for tech support. <laughs> this was an, I don't know if like people are all for the holidays or whatever. They're like, oh yes, you're, you're an official representative for black magic again. I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, don't, don't. Leave, leave a YouTube comment. Somebody get back to you. Maybe. Um, was it the Da Vinci again? <laughs> it's always the Da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the Da Vinci. <laughs> it's either that or um, like I bought something to try to hook up a firewire interface that you never even mentioned. I'm like, have fun with that. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you know what? Here's what I'm thinking about doing. It's like setting up a, like a drop down for a, uh, tech support where it's just going to mail back uh let me google that for you with the uh oh <laughs> an automated tech the thing that they asked to the end of pipe the it LGMT yeah do that feed yeah. that and like spit out the link and email that back yep yeah we wouldn't do that because that'd be mean i'll let Pedro no. do it so on the topic of linus no yeah. not that one the squeaky one dan writes in making things linus proof is a good thing I'm sure it will introduce more scrolling for people who know them, but for new Linuxers, it will be a big help to have the very basics given to us at the source. The biggest hurdle really for me after decades of abuse from Microsoft is that something, if that something doesn't work, I have absolutely no idea how to fix it. And sometimes the instructions on how to do so once I Google good on you, dad, for them, um, (laughs) presume a level of knowledge in the reader I do not have. That is a challenge, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> or it's a roadblock. <laughs> it, 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 wheat from the chaff, Pedro. Wheat from the chaff. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, hi, I'm your fellow entitled Linux user, gatekeeping, big meanie, but no, I'm not. It's, I thought that a, was me. No, listen, I, <laughs> I, I just laugh at that. I'm like, we're talking about basic life le- lessons that you can apply to literally everything. You, oh, I, I give up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm like, come on. <laughs> that's how most people go about life, yes. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's not how old man then rolls. Uh, okay, yeah. to continue. Maybe Too there could be two people. sets of instructions. One for you guys, and one for people like me who need to be treated like idiots. No, that's why Windows exists. Um, I, I don't care for Linus. Linus that's why Mac work, exists. But he, <laughs> that, that's for idiots with money. That's why Max exists. Uh, yeah. But he is pretty well situated to present the problems to people like me have in front of the audience, thereby getting things to be made a little easier and getting new Linuxers who will eventually be on the Not Idiots instructions. Good work. Linus, Dan. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, did, well, I defended because, the squeaky one last week. So Yeah, yeah. Pop, o, Pop OS is better for it. A bug was fixed. <laughs> the one thing I noticed, I talked about That's this good. on... Um, after the show, we do show Linux Gamecast weekly on Saturdays. Um, wait, no, it was on Friday. Friday, they do the WAN show. Mm-hmm. And, and Luke. Yeah. And I didn't catch mm-hmm. until, like, I think the show was over. They were just doing the live stream. And I heard Linus bring up, you know, a good thing came out of that. Uh, one project has even uh, used my suggestions to improve their document. He was genuinely talking about the story last week. That the commit was called Making This Idiot Proof. Yeah. <laughs> XLR. And yeah. <laughs> here's the thing. Linux is not your gem if your modus operandi is I've tried absolutely nothing and I'm all out of ideas. Linux is not your not gonna work for you. It's not. If you're not curious, if you don't have a desire to learn, I'm not I'm being honest here. I'm not mm-hmm. going to try to sugarcoat it for you. It's that's not, not gonna change anyone's mind, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you you really are going to have to, I mean, this hasn't changed, you know, you, you need to have that desire of wanting to know how, you need to have been the kid that took stuff apart. Linux is going to work mm-hmm. for you better because it's going to get you in that headspace of People like, how like does this work? Tinker. You're going to get curious. <laughs> you're going to try to solve this one problem and doing that, you're going to learn like six new things. Now, if you see that as a horrible thing, you know, not the operating system you're going to enjoy doing. Because you're, no. you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn a whole mm-hmm. new thing. And here's the big one I will always drag out. You had to learn how to use Windows, but you forgot.
got yep. that because you've been using it for so long. You yes, started now it's with an it. inherent bias. <laughs> But that's, that's different, uh, uh, Pedro. Do you see? It? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the thing. Uh, recognizing your own biases is very good, and uh, this is not just for operating systems. Take a game. Take your ability to hold a game controller in your hands. You know that you hold it like this, right? Okay, mind the right hand, but uh, you hold it like this. You don't hold it like this and go. I, I don't know what's going don't on. Doing it right now, man. Like, being able to know that you hold a controller like this is a bias. This is an inherent bias that you already have. Yeah. It's, this is the stuff you need to learn to recognize. Nah, if you, uh, I just like grabbing feet. These look like feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people who like grabbing feet. Not like but that. But this no. is not that kind of podcast. No, no, no. Uh, the- Pedro, I, I, I'm clearly talking about <laughs> non-sexual feet grabbing here. <laughs> mm, this is the internet. There is no such thing. <laughs> Probably not. Well, um, well Dan, you're, he's already head of the game. The fact that he contacted us, contacted us, and mm-hmm. you know gave his opinion, which is 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 true. You know, th- this Linus is an average junior user on Linux, and I commend you, you know, Dan, for for writing us and. That that step alone, you know, is, is just saying say, that like, I'm L- Linux isn't. <laughs> I'm curious and I want to learn and, it's and not start what using saying. Linux more. Dan <laughs> Dan wants a version of Linux that, and this is being very honest, does not and probably will not ever exist. Yeah, it's, 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 the, it's that bit of a unicorn of the true user friendly Linux distro, which. It seems the more you look at it and what that would entail seems fairly antithetical to the whole concept of Linux as a a different operating system. Because if you want that, if you want a Unix-like operating system that's easy to use, you go to Mac OS. Yeah, VSD, use Mm -hmm. Android. Uh, Chrome OS. Use Chrome OS. Yeah, good one, Jill. Chrome, yeah. yeah. (laughs) That's where that experience is. And you're being extremely disingenuous when I bring something like that up, or anybody does. It's like, hey, it's a coalition of people just working together to create a thing that works differently for everybody. That's not gatekeeping. That's called reality. And that has been reality for 30 years. And you know what I was doing 20 years ago? I was having conversations with people how we're going to fix Linux and having the exact Mm -hmm. same conversations conversations. that we're having Mm -hmm. that Linus was doing in his video. That's not new. Mm -hmm. That's not even old. That's ancient. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Same story 20 years later. And yeah. yeah, he's just the last really famous he's person new. to yeah. realize it, that. It, 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 it's like, it, it is a cycle. It's a cycle going through like, oh, I'm going to fix everything. And then, then it falls down. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it, like, kudos. You got the Go XLR peeps to actually explain how you open a terminal mm-hmm. that you need to run their script with sudo. And I think they had to stop themselves from including the, you don't just right click, save the link as on GitHub. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pedro, because... only developers can use GitHub. Yeah. Yes. No, uh, <laughs> only developers it... <laughs> can use GitHub. And if you need GitHub, then Linux is just for developers. Yeah. So, what a sheltered See, GitHub life you've is led. Not, yeah. <laughs> GitHub is not Linux. <laughs> That's it's those the West Coast Canadians, it, man. It, it, we're used to dealing like with in East the Coast Windows Canadians. World. They got, they're smart. <laughs> you know, in the yeah, Windows world, no, you, can, you can download some, <laughs> some, you know, weird uh, driver app on another website, but that's not Windows. <laughs> that's the thing. Um, you want to go look for Windows software on GitHub? You know what you're going to find? Piracy <laughs> tools. How to activate Office without yeah. paying for it. How to activate Windows without paying for it. That kind of stuff. Plenty of that on GitHub. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're putting your trust into going to random, uh, not even random, but like manufacturers' websites to download their drivers. And I'm sure they're up to snuff 100%. Nothing would be put in that. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. They're all legitimate, right? Because it's the brand. <laughs> right, Huawei? Right? <sighs> right? Yeah, Huawei. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I posted that in our Discord, um, or even during the live stream, about how lot. Linux helps prevent piracy because it was legitimately <laughs> yeah. on one of my tweet deck feeds. Somebody just railing, like, I just can't use Linux. It doesn't work with my, huh? not making this up either. This exists. Pirated software. Straight up pirated, pirated software Adobe. wouldn't yeah. work on Linux. So I'm just not going to be able to use Linux, to which I say, excellent. 
<laughs> Good Linux. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I look forward to the next few parts. Again, I defended uh, the squeaky one last week on a couple of points that he raised. Good points, too. He's raised plenty of bad ones. Uh, he keeps parroting the fragmentation thing, and I don't think he knows what that he means. He doesn't understand what fragmentation yeah, is. Yeah, he doesn't understand. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll wait. I can just uh, see the retort. Give, like, yes, guys, I know what fragmentation after. is, but I'm trying to explain it to my audience. I'm like, <laughs> no, he heard that term associated with Linux because it seems to be a term that gets brandied about a lot. And I've already said my piece on that. It's not fragmentation. Yes. It's choice. Fragmentation. Can take. Choice and experimentation. <laughs> Fragmenting too the, much on the way over. <laughs> <laughs> Open source experimentation is choice. <laughs> and ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, one thing you will absolutely discover about me. I don't care what operating system you run. I don't judge you on that. Grow up. <laughs> On that bombshell. We got to get out of here. We're running a little bit long. <laughs> I think we're going to spool up some music. Thanks some okay. patrons. And roll some credits. Because I'm going to touch, touch my MIDI device until something wiggles. And I know I'm in the room. I'm going to do that. That sounds way too sexy for Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all our beautiful patrons. We have some new people in chat. We've got we do. two tank. Make Camp like Hammond Hammond Jr. Yeah. <laughs> we have some new patrons. Omega and Art Theron. Follow them with our executive producers like Aldius, Barbara, and Scott M. Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Cat. Oh, lost to the ages. <laughs> <Dark Yeah. laughs> the for Chicago kicks a lot of butt. And the Sea Monsters, Jack, <laughs> Renault, Ryder, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Vertanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, and someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Joe. Uh, Jason B., Lord Maka, Joel W., Iris121, AJ, Das Geek. <laughs> That's as far as I can get. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it will be belong. Just get out there, make something awesome, and have a good time when you're doing it. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Bye bye. bye. Love you all. <laughs>but yes thank you all uh who joined this uh wasabi and uh tutankhamon jr and um yeah wasabi i love that wasabi cheetah (laughs) (laughs) i mentioned the uh, (laughs) not having the spirit of a uh, dad pharaoh uh on saturday to possess me (laughs) yes uh, Ah, (laughs) no okay (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Some people got dad bods. Pedro's over here with a dad pharaoh. <laughs> Dead, <laughs> as in not alive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. Now we have a uh, Tuto Camon Junior. Uh, all right, cool. <laughs> uh, all right, but yes, no. Uh, we geek out over Linuxy things in general. And uh, if you like gaming, tune in basically every other day of the week except Sunday and Monday. Those are the two days where there usually isn't anything. Sometimes someone will want to do a stream. But, um, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) That's kind of what we do. There's nothing wrong with Pharaohs. I made a joke on Saturday. You did? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you gotta warn me, man. Oh yeah, you did at you the did, start yeah. of the review. <laughs> oh, that's that... why you were. Lo- yeah. <laughs> no, I, I don't, man. I, I'm barely participating during the review segment. I'm Aww. playing so much. <laughs> Jump around over here. Mini Mouse Mug. Yeah, I love this. Uh, I the reason the, uh, I, I got you this said one. You were gonna do things. <laughs> the reason Arthur and I got this one because it, it actually holds a lot of water, and I was really thirsty today because it's been very dry. <laughs> Uh, and I like its cute mini mouse. It's mini mouse. <laughs> You've been in Disney Land a little too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. That's a little too much Disney Land. <laughs> well, what's so funny is I just saw an interview with the lady, the 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 current voice of Minnie Mouse, and I can I can do it just as good as she can. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> probably doesn't take much. I mean, but, honestly. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was funny. It was funny. I actually kind of want to meet her someday. I had I had met some of the three musketeers. I meant three musketeers. The original uh, Mickey Mouse musketeers years ago. The musketeers. <laughs> The Mouseketeers. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, the Mouseketeers. <laughs> and one of, one of the kids was, you know, the voice later up. Later, as she grew up, she became the voice of Minnie Mouse. And um, you know, she had told me, she goes, further and further to the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so move it. Or yeah. move you. <laughs> you can scoot over to your left. Or, there you go. Because when you're off, <laughs> off access, it is really noticeable. That's like me talking, talking like, hey, how's it going, everybody? Hey, look, now I'm in front of the microphone. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. It happens sometimes. Do, do, do. But yeah, you two don't have to. I just looked it up. So you guys are 8,756 kilometers from each other. Hmm? Huh? Between Jill and Pedro. Me and Pedro. The signal's got to go. Wow. Each way, yeah. 8.7 thousand <laughs> kilometers. That is 5,400 freedom units. So, yeah, it's a 10,000 mile run trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. It's almost... Um, Pretty amazing. <laughs> 20,000 kilometers, which is why Jill and myself keep talking over each other, because... Uh, it's like a full yeah, second so of delay there. <laughs> delay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, Pedro. Yeah, it's been real noticeable the last couple day, last couple weeks. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just I don't want to speak over you, and so when I see you yeah. just start talking, I go quiet. So if I do that, you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When you were busy looking up stuff, I just wanted to kind of keep the news flowing. <laughs> so. I can tell you guys what your uh, like real number delay is from each other if you want to find out. <laughs> you are the in betweeny point, literally. Yeah, that's not a second. <laughs> it's not a second. It's more than a second. No. Okay. Cool. <laughs> It, yeah, it sometimes feels like more than a second. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just long enough that um, I'll start talking, and as far as Jill's concerned, I haven't started talking, so she starts talking. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, no, sometimes cool. y'all two just talk over each other now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what um, Jordan used to do. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, three uh, times ten to the power of eight mm -hmm. meters per second. <laughs> now, now wow. put put the light in the copper wire. <laughs> It is energy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it goes <laughs> that well, but uh, it is energy, technically. Now, mm. that, that's how fiber optic, uh, that's conversion, man. You just shine the light at the end of some... <laughs> you shine it really hard. <laughs> No, I mean, <laughs> there's always, like, there's a, uh, when Pedro says something, it comes in over, um, our Sona bus connection, and I have 2.7 milliseconds to take his audio, run it through the vocal processing stack, split it to make sure that Jill hears it, I hear it, stream, then it sends everything over to another computer, and, uh, vice versa, so... I am additional latency of 2.7 milliseconds. Then, you have a GUI up, don't you? Yes. What is your um, latency to me? 
Um, it's currently set at 256 milliseconds. 256 milliseconds. And Joe, you can pull up the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, 256. Because I think that's what you had to set it at no, a while ago. I'm talking about your connection latency, not your um. Oh, uh, right. Uh, yeah. Latency is 321 milliseconds. There we go. With 123 uh, milliseconds uh, ping. <laughs> so that's a third of a second to get to you. 2.7 milliseconds yeah. to hang out here. Yep. <laughs> And Jill, what's your uh, latency on the far right of the connection in the Sonobus room? Where it says latency milliseconds in ping? Why am I not? I'm having a hard time seeing it right now. And just take a screenshot. It is, <laughs> tiny. Get... It is a tiny font, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, but what's the speed of copper and light, man? <laughs> My latency is. This is where a screenshot. Would come in <laughs> Sorry, handy. I had to get my Zoom. <laughs> from... <laughs> Take a screenshot. Zoom blow it up. <laughs> or just pop it in Discord. Two eighty-seven. Yeah, it we'll says. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a full half second without the two half and a half second, seconds already. Monster, it's more than six hundred and ten point seven milliseconds. <laughs> <laughs> Would you skip math? <laughs> I was saying is more than a full half second plus the teeny teeny tiny bit of a 2.7 milliseconds in Vens uh, no I factored in my 2.7 with that calculation oh, okay cool <laughs> what do you think I am <laughs> I don't know I stopped asking questions like that a long time ago <laughs> so that's not a bad round trip it's pretty good Okay. <laughs> From LA to London. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, these two are because what is there? Eight hour difference? Yep. Yeah. It's uh, GMT minus eight. That's Pacific Standard. Yeah. <laughs> It's lunchtime in Jill's house and Deidre's getting ready to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. It's almost 10 p.m. here. <laughs> well, not. Pedro's a normal human I won't being. go to bed yeah. for another three or four hours, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, this is Pedro, Pedro chatting at like 1.45 this morning. I'm like, in bed, son. You gotta go to work tomorrow. It was 1.25. <laughs> oh. Because I was in bed at 1.30. 1.25, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mom. I was... <laughs> Well, then, look what you make him do earlier. on Saturdays. He, he, has to, he has to get up at, like, 2 in the morning. He doesn't get up. <laughs> yeah, I don't lay down. <laughs> like, Jordan cracked this a long time ago. Like, take the nap. And I'm at the point now where I, I, I know I can't take a nap, but I force myself to go lay down for, like, an hour. It just browse YouTube. Major just yells all these, like, I'm in the chair anyway. I wake up at 10 a.m. and I stay up until... Six, seven, mm. whatever the live stream ends. A.M. the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Sundays basically before 1 p.m. don't exist for me because I need sleepy time <laughs> after that. Yeah. <laughs> My Sunday is just a big party, though, man. <laughs> just video editing. <laughs> I haven't had a Sunday in 10 years. <laughs> My goal is, as long as I get everything out and done by like 5, 6 p.m. So that's like, it takes like eight or nine hours to do. Which isn't bad. 
We've definitely got it uh, drilled down to the only hurry up and wait thing I have to do right now. I'm reworking my schedule where I go to the grocery on Sundays because I'm waiting for things to upload. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can get back from here to the grocery in under 47, 45, 47 minutes. That's usually when I will get up. It's when I've recorded the uh, the video for the review. Mm-hmm. We'll put it on head break, get up, go to the bathroom, do things, come back. Oh, it's done. Cool. Mm. Put it to upload on Google Drive. Go do more things. <laughs> See, that was the new mm. thing I threw in this week. <laughs> I stored both of the handbrake transcodes while it was uploading. Because uh, oh. episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly is about 10 to 12 gigabytes that I'm sending to YouTube. And I went ahead and started the transcoding, so... It's breaking down that 10 to 12 gigabyte file into like three to 500 megs, depending because we post an SD and HD video quality uh, live. And that was it. that those two together, plus the MP3 that go out for distribution are only like 1.2 gigs, which I can easily upload that. I'm like, okay, and just wait. But yeah, it still takes a long time. <laughs> it's like <laughs> downloading a game that's like 80 gigs. You're like, ah, yeah. I, I gotta go That's find something to do. That's just long enough that I yeah. can justify getting up. Okay. <laughs> so look at that. You're like, I guess I go read Reddit or something, man. Just, just having like flashbacks. Like, this is horrible. How do people... First world problems. How did people yeah. survive in the days before smartphones and tablets? That's Oh, that's going to take a while. Pull out the phone. I still have some of that DNA because then I start doing laundry and things. Yeah, <laughs> get up and do chores. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Yeah, it's like you've ever, ever been <laughs> procrastinating hard enough to where you do chores. I have. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I really don't want to do that. I'm gonna go wash the dishes. Or oh, I'm yeah. gonna go <laughs> put laundry in the washer. Dishes, oh, laundry. <laughs> yeah. Man, these floors they need sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> all those fun things alright so uh, we're about to wrap it up yes do you have any infamous last you words do. Jill yeah <laughs> oh this was a fun show and thank you to all our new people that, that came in and chatted with us do, do, do. that's uh, it's very Time nice to, to see lunch. Uh, new peeps <laughs> And uh, hopefully we didn't scare you off. So come back next mm -hmm. week around the same time. Oh. <laughs> See, I, hopefully. And it's always I, different every week. <laughs> we'll get like Which is the, awesome. Uh, we always have some new different people. In. Maybe maybe I, <laughs> I, I've been, in, attacked Fedora and Linus this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can uh, yeah. hit on both equally. <laughs> <laughs> Meme distributions. <laughs> I don't know. I it, to the end of days, I'll have Red Hat and Fedora's back because that, that's where I started out. But I'll hundred percent agree with like what year was it in the year of our holy noodle that we finally got MP3 support added? Yeah, <laughs> out of the box in Fedora uh, last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was last year when the license became available to. Oh, them. it was yeah. it was available before that by a little bit. <laughs> well, no, but their licenses they no, the MPEG LA they, license yeah, they drug ass yeah. doing it, Joe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, what was it twenty eighteen something like that. that. The yeah twenty eighteen expired. That's right. Yeah, and then they didn't implement it until twenty twenty. It was a fun joke while it lasted. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We were almost right. 2017. Oh, 2017. All right. Oh, we were <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> off by a full year. <laughs> Giving Fedora one year worth of a uh, benefit of the doubt. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that, 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 it, ask, I mean, that's just part of installing Fedora. Of like adding your uh, copper support for your MP3s and 
video yeah, codecs. RPM Fusion, uh, the Negativo 17 uh, repos for multimedia and Steam. Uh, and uh, if you need something else that has a questionable license, uh, you go and hunt for the copper. You probably already know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, this is why I will always like commend distributions like Pop OS. Okay, you know what? We ship a working Linux distribution out of the box, but by freedoms, Manjaro. <laughs> like the I, I I spent listen I, I spent a solid like 15, 18 years like stabbing myself in the ankles, going, "We're gonna do everything for open source, you guys." <laughs> But I come from, like, that, the, the open source movement and the Linux movement, they get a lot in common, but they're not the same thing. They go end in hand most of the time, but yeah, no, they're not the same thing. <laughs> Ask Linus, the real one, not the squeak one. <laughs> like, what, what are your yeah, thoughts no, on the, open source? And he'll be like, eh. it, it, Yeah, it's a, it serves what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I come from a time to where if you made a product that worked on Linux and you supported Linux, I would give you money. Yeah. Yep. So, look at I it. I gave money to Humble when they started doing, like, the Humble Indie bundles with Linux games. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money that I just threw at Humble's like, Get Give me games. Well, me yeah. you see, Pedro, <laughs> that gaming me. is my favorite low-yield thermonuclear device that I drop anytime someone jumps on me with the open source <laughs> thing. I'm like, so you only play open source video games? Go ahead and tell me how that's <laughs> different again. I love a new... I, give me a new one, though. Give me one I haven't heard before. I, give me that excuse. <laughs> just watch me vibrate. <laughs> ah, no, it's... Oh, but AMD's drivers are open source. No, they're not. <laughs> the shim that allows you to access the proprietary blob that's already in the kernel may be open source, but the driver itself is not. Sorry. <laughs> Isn't it going to be fun living in this world where Intel has like straight up open source driver stack and a video could yeah. go along with it? That's, that's going to be exciting. That's going <laughs> to be weird, but... Uh, that will be an interesting future. Truly open source uh, software stack. The hardware won't be open source, but the software that runs it is, already is. <laughs> and that's just an absolute bonus. I, this is like, what are you excited about in the next year? Whatever Intel pulls out, because I, yeah, that that is a market that needs. Um, it's like hardware wise, it's the Game Gear and the Intel uh, GPUs. That's it. Mm -hmm. Intel GPUs, man. <laughs> I, I I have genuine excitement about that because yeah, yeah. <laughs> Intel's also got the money to walk over to places like Adobe and Blackmagic and be like, make sure that works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they did that to Microsoft <laughs> and Alder Lake yeah. on Windows 11 and left Windows 10 to rot. You know, the current version of Windows that most people are running. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that rot. <laughs> well, well, I immediately bring that up because Black Magic is highly susceptible to money. Ask uh, you, you, you noticed when the Apple M1 rolled out, DaVinci Resolve's like, and we got support. Here's our driver stack, ready to go. They didn't do that out of the love of the M1. And Adobe. Oh yeah, no, we support um, platforms which have a significant enough user base to justify it. I'm pretty sure there's more people with uh, x86-64 uh, Max than there are with M1s, and you've already dropped support for everything except Catalina. Yeah, but Pedro, Adobe products mm -hmm. are infinitely easier to pirate on Windows, so... <laughs> yes, they are, which is why a lot of people get stuck in that particular platform. <laughs> but then again, you got Adobe galaxy brain moment I'm like subscription service you can't yeah <laughs> you know they've turned track mania into a subscription service hey yeah check this out because you know there's the track mania 2000 mm -hmm. we're gonna be talking oh, about that this. one the one that everyone hated right no <laughs> this is the one that everyone plays 
I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. We, uh, we're going to be talking about this on Saturday, but Ubisoft made an update in their Connect launcher for Steam, which does exist. It can mean a million things, but we're going to just speculate all over the floor uh, about it. <laughs> but it was very timely because the day before that, I was like, okay, what's it going to take? Because one thing I've always wanted was like an easy to set up like Ubisoft store launcher from within Steam. You know, because it, it'll launch the Ubisoft Connect, but you can't like get anything from it. It just shows what you have in your library. Mm-hmm. I wanted the new track mania. <laughs> I'm like, well, how do I go about this? Can I install? And I went through with it. I finally got it to work. It was like, I'm not even going to make that a guy, <laughs> man. That was when I, I, I was up to my elbows and that. But if they, if Ubisoft was just like, all right, whatever, here's like, you can do the thing. And Steam's kind of cool about stuff. I'm like, whatever, fine. Which this also gets interesting because Ubisoft did the thing, they signed the deal for, I don't know if they're money exchange hands, but they publicly said last year that, like, we're just going to be releasing the Epic Store. And I guess I'm like, well, you know what? We like this money thing, though. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, the new Track Mania, the one that everyone's playing... Is, I track media 2020 yes turbo was the one I was thinking of which was the one that everyone hated oh. mm. but yeah, yeah the was, new track mania yeah. is free to play but if you want to play it's like nine dollars a month or something like that or so. I, I didn't mm. look into it I just was like what okay so it's just yeah they turned track mania into it's perpetually upgraded okay the base yeah. game is free to play with Not additional cool. content available with a paid subscription model, including an in-game track editor, online events, and card mm -hmm. customization. Oh, so it's track, ma uh, track Mania Nations, but you have the option to pay every single month instead of just it, playing okay, the game outright. It, it's Track Mania Nations without a, any single player whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi, Becco Farm. It's, Sorry um, you missed it. <laughs> It's a live service, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, 100%. James Stephanie Sterling is uh, railing, uh, has been railing on that for a long time, and uh, they they've turned a racing game into an board? MMO, a subscription <laughs> MMO. I mean, the like maliciously evil side of me is over huh. here going, but the practice is like, wow, really? Can't even own Trek Media anymore. Well done, huh? Nope. It's a service Monsters. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, it is Ubisoft. That that Ubisoft have always been uh -huh. the first to jump on the really shady, really creepy, really money grubby stuff. Remember DRM? Remember <laughs> when DRM became the thing that everyone hated? Ubisoft. Because when Assassin's Creed, the first one, came out. People couldn't play the game for the first week. The people who bought the game couldn't play it for the first week. Everyone who had pirated it. Yep, game worked just fine. Here's another thing. Um, I, I get this way too much. I, you know, I bring up Steam. There, there's the Steam haters. Yes. Um, but it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, you mean the DRM encumbered? We, we did the thing with like the Steam DRM and we did the deep dive and like, you mean all seven games on Steam? That your Steam DRM? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All seven of them? That's what you're fighting the fight like, against? Uh, the CEG wasn't really popular. No and if you're talking it. about mm -hmm. VAC, then you're a dirty <laughs> cheater. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, The there's a lot of hate for Valve out there. I am i don't know if it's people that got banned from Steam and lost their entire things. No, it's Windows um, users. <laughs> but given mm -hmm. all of the alternatives, you have um, Timmy's uh, Epic Store, which is store. just you, you mean uh, the, you know you're talking about the fork knife launcher, yes, uh, Epic website, <laughs> effectively, <laughs> is the Epic Games launcher uh, because the store is questionable. Um, the which is you know run by. Um, Timmy the incongruous um He's got a point. He's slacktivist. Pedro takes his own path, man. He's gotta sit back, relax, get some popcorn. 
It, uh, seriously, he contradicts himself sometimes in the same thread on Twitter. Yeah, but he, he's also... <laughs> and people a, point it out to him. And it's like, I don't see what you mean. It's like, he does what the investors <laughs> and stockholders tell him to do. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, Epic's kind of a non-starter, but can you see... Here, here's one of my theories with the Ubisoft update, because you know what? I want to get on the Steam Deck, too. Of course they do. Mm -hmm. Anyone Money. who's been paying attention to the hype around the Steam Deck Money. is kind of going, maybe. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Ubisoft <laughs> likes the money. As yeah, yeah. Epic and Epic's like, we can't afford to keep Ubisoft on <laughs> That's a good one, Don M. <laughs> so. Yeah, no. And then you have Ubisoft, which is, uh, you know, um, has been confirmed. Um, EA's that they already there. Of... EA's like, man, we're gonna be there on launch day, son. We've already got this figured yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, harboring um, molesters and other uh, sex offenders. And then you have EA, which is, well, uh, you want to talk about scummy. Um, we are going to like two more, two AAA more publishers. The, we got Rockstar. Listen, <laughs> we can, we we can. Uh, Build a naughty Blizzard. Voltron right now. <laughs> but if we get Blizzard, we got the co complete collection, man. Yeah. And now Activision, because even Bobby Kotick himself was implicated on the allegations, so... Yeah. Um, to which not a single person in the history of ever had a la gasp moment. I told you. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Bobby Kotick is what? kind of a butt face? No. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, in all fairness, like a lot of stuff didn't work with wine 20 years ago. I forgot it to be talking about skewer rum. Yes, it was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I was there. So, uh, yeah, buy, you got plenty of indie titles. I mean, buy your things anywhere you want. Uh, but you know, like, you know, downloadable copies of the game. There's a argument to make. Because, I mean, there's some games that require the Steam runtime to launch. Mm -hmm. And it, even for that, you have Lutris, which did a very good job of uh, basically copying the uh, Steam runtime altogether. That's where Lutrising something came from. And then uh, basically complementing that by including the other libraries but that Steam remember, if you're going to be but... running Lutris, you need to make sure you get Proton GE. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I still need someone to tell me what the difference is between uh, the Lutris build of wine and the GE Lutris build of uh, wine. One of them like, Strider, Strider gets real you snippy cook differently. about. <laughs> yeah, he does. I'm like, oh, we're, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> all right, beautiful people. I got to uh, go transmogrify all the data bits. We'll see mm -hmm. you next week. Jordan will be back tomorrow with some. Bye, everyone. Friday, I am going to be uh, doing some retro thingies because I got wine ah. kind of running, I think. I have not thoroughly tested anything, but <laughs> I'm going to be dropping that. I'm going to be dropping that, kids. I did some arts oh, and crafts. Okay. For, Is like, that your overlay? <laughs> that's my 4x3 overlay. What do you think of that? Uh, that's pretty good. My <laughs> four by three overlay yeah. is just Linux game cast on one side and Linux game cast <laughs> on the other. <laughs> Mine it's got Linux game cast, but it did it in the Atari font thing when I outlined yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and it's got a little fake CRT. I art it, man. I had to like my tongue hanging out a little bit. Like <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be playing some uh the Mega Man Atari twenty six hundred D make. Uh oh, cool. Friday. So we'll be checking that out. All right, everyone. Let's see. Bye-bye.